A group of 30 eminent Nigerians have formed a new political movement aimed at driving reforms in the country. In a communique is issued in Abuja on Wednesday, the group unveiled the name of the platform as National Consultative Front. Among the members of the movement are Gali Naaba, a former Speaker of the House of Representatives, Ulisag Bakoba, a prominent lawyer, Femi Falono, a human rights lawyer, Obadami Lapia, ex-deputy governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, and Obi Ezekwesili. Others are Professor Patutomi, a renowned political economist, Avokar Umar, Jibo Ibrahim, Chidi Odenkalo, Sheh Husani, a former senator, Remy Shonaiya, former presidential candidate, Tanko Yinusa, Shatima Yerima, and Funke Awalowo. The group added that its intervention is aimed at providing a credible alternative political class and leadership for Nigeria as a result of the failures of the past leaders of the country. Joining us live is the convener of Center for Valley Leadership, Professor Pat Utomi, to have a conversation around this. Thank you for joining us, Professor. It's a pleasure. Uh, please tell us more about this movement. Is this another party, or what do we call it exactly? Um, I think uh, what uh, has happened is that there is an obsession with parties and foreign parties. as a broader issue in Nigeria which is whether our democracy is working and whether it's serving the best interest of the Nigerian people. And in any society, concerned people of conscience get together to reflect on these kinds of matters. As you can get several of such concerned groups of people are meeting. Um, the first motivation is on a completely non-partisan basis to look at what the problem is or problems may be. And in doing this, there's strands of thought that are evolving. And one of those strands is the need to build an umbrella body that can do a variety of things. Birth civil society organizations, birth political parties is not even just one that represents what political parties really are as there's clearly evidence that there's no functional political party in nigeria at this time in the classic sense of what parties do mobilize people socialize them into a certain worldview and use that worldview to solve problems for society uh, Nigerian political parties we know are not doing that right now. They're essentially uh, platforms for grabbing power, usually uh, for the pursuit of legal plunder for the individuals. And uh, we think that this has not served the Nigerian people well. This is why poverty has become second nature to us in Nigeria. And the result of that poverty is the violence that is all over the place around the country. So a rethinking of the nature of our political process is part of what these groups of people have been discussing. Mm. I mean, it's unfortunate uh, to hear that, you know, a political space in Nigeria has become platforms to grab, grab power, as you have put it there. Professor Pat, if my memory is correct, you've been involved in other co coalition in contemporary history. What is the drive again this time? Why are you not giving up, if I may add it? That, that is really the point. I mean, uh, people like us, in fact, part of this started when my old colleagues in the concerned professionals who fought military rule to a standstill under Abacha began to say, this democracy we fought for has not worked. It is failing the Nigerian people. I mean, we're in conditions similar to, if not worse than Abacha conditions in many ways, in many aspects of our life. I mean, just witness the conversation between uh, Festus Kiyamo and members of the house the other day, and you wonder, what is really going on. Mm. And so uh, they, they began to call up and to say, look, uh, we need to begin to rethink our country. But the same kinds of people got together as same Nigeria group when uh, this democracy began to stumble and uh, sponsor when um, the uh, Jonathan transition from 
President Yara do a problematic as some people are trying to hijack the state. As is evident, state capture has been part of the problem of Nigeria. So how do we get out of state capture and create democracy that is a government of the people, for the people, by the people, and not a government of politicians, for politicians, by politicians? <laughs> and this is what the conversation has been. I mean, there are those who argue, for example, that in the middle of the kind of economic crisis we have, you know, uh, look at the projection from the World Bank and elsewhere. You would think that politicians will all cut down now, get into a war mode. How can we fix our country? How can we prevent too many people from falling into poverty as the World Bank and others have predicted? But instead, all we see is squabbling for personal positioning uh, and who will get what, who will give what out. Uh, you know, it's, it's been so sad. So what we have seen is several groups coming together and saying, we want uh, civil society movements. I mean, a number of people who have spoken with me, for example, say, we don't want to run for office, but we want to be involved in a movement that says we must end election violence and we must ensure that voting is taking place and that it is free and mm -hmm. fair. So we want electronic voting. Right. There's a huge movement of Nigerian youth in the diaspora working on a new kind of electronic uh, voting. They, they're working with Oracle and others. To ensure that you can vote from the comfort of your living rooms. Obviously, Nigerian politicians are invested in not allowing voting to take place. And that's why we have this electoral reform mess like this great. They don't want people to vote because they want to hijack the state. They don't care about your representation. They just want to hold power. So there's a movement that wants to focus on nothing but just that. Mm -hmm. There's a group that wants to end godfatherism in politics. They want an NGO to fight that. There's a group that's interested in corruption. They want to prosecute Nigerian governors in international criminal courts for use of uh, security votes. There's another group that wants to deal with decentralization of authority and power. Uh, all of these groups are part of the coalition. Then if some of these can move into some clear political parties who want to right, who want to left, if you want to use that traditional idea of physiology, where they have a clear party flag and the values are such. Mm. Public right. life is about public virtue, is about public morality. As Nigerian political scientist Peter Eke argues, and Montesquieu argued in the beginning of the American um, constitution making. Where is public virtue? Where is public morality in public life in Nigeria today? Mm. There are those who want to make sure that political parties represent a process of recruiting people of public virtue to give service to the Nigerian people. All right, so these are all the things subsumed under these movements going on. All right, you will be a part of, or you are a part of the steering committee for this new uh, development. What will be the specific job uh, or role of that steering committee? Help us understand. Well, yes, just, just like during the concerned professionals, uh, I was part of a steering committee. One of the things that Nigerians have not quite come to uh, terms with is the leader who has no title, the leader who is not scrambling for a title. Most people don't realize that we literally run the concerned professionals as a movement, just as a steering committee. We always had one person that was called the chairman. Few people remember who was chairman at any point in time. It was Tola Mopoluri at one time, it was Sam Monier at one time, uh, you know. Uh, but we all, as a steering committee, synthesized ideas about what the problems of our country were and what to do about it. I mean, people who have hijacked history talk about Nadeko, Nadeko, Nadeko. They don't realize that in the main, the essence of Nadeko came out of the concerned professionals. The concerned professional who was the liaison to Nadeko Nobody even mentions his name today when they write the history. And his name is Asue Igudalo. He's the chairman of a bank today. But he was the one liaison that enabled the Nadeko at home, which did the real Nadeko work, mm. to uh, crystallize in, in those days. 
So it's that same attitude we are bringing to this. All right. uh, most people don't realize that most of us don't need, in fact, we are accused today, Chief Shegun Shoba, who was active in the struggle, who were in Nadeko, uh, was accusing me on a, 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 an event that your station covered uh, uh, that if we had taken over the country in 99 after having struggled to make it happen, the country wouldn't be the mess that it is today. Mm. But our interest was not in power. It was in our country running right. Mm. But it seems like we may have made a mistake in assuming that those that showed up in 99 were those who will run it right. In talking about our country running right, uh, we've seen good intentions like this, you know, over time in history begin. And then somewhere along the line, something happens. It is hijacked. Now, how do you ensure that this is not hijacked by politicians from, you know, the two major parties? Because the list contains uh, some former presidential candidates, including you, who are a politician, uh, you know, who are politicians too. How, how do you marry both? There's nothing wrong with being a politician. In fact, everybody should be a politician. Uh, and that is what we actually want to encourage people to become active in, in politics. Uh, if, if anybody were afraid of politics, you will get what we have gotten. Because you are not active speaking for what you think is the right way forward. The thing is to have clear rules standards of and values that ensure that politics is about service, that it is not about self. One of the ways is to ensure that the political arena is not materially attractive. Uh, it used to be that in this country, uh, the politicians were not a, a, a well-known person, uh, Onyeka Onwenu, uh, tells the story of her father, who was a major politician in the pre-66 uh, uh, Nigeria. He was a school principal. Uh, he was a member of the parliament, national parliament. He drew, rode his bicycle. He, you know, borrowed money from her mother, as she used to say, because he didn't have enough money uh, most times. Uh, and that was the politician that we knew. Today, uh, the, the need for politics to be a, a source of extraction rather than a source of service, has become, sadly, the, the thing of our time. Uh, you don't have to be a, a, a person in pursuit of plunder. This is because this is what political life has become. Going back to 1840-something France uh, that uh, uh, Frederick Bastia has described, the pursuit of legal plunder. We must discourage that people should lose material from going into politics rather than gain materially. Mm -hmm. But they should be able to gain something like immortality, a place in history. That's when politics becomes what it was designed to be, uh, an arena of public virtue, as Montesquieu right. uh, argued. And looking at the list of uh, people that make up this new uh, group, if you like, you have chosen the best of best, um, you know, refined, experienced, and very seasoned uh, personalities and individuals. But the question is, is there any reason where there is no younger person, so to speak, to represent the face of the younger, uh, you know, generation of Nigerians who are most definitely, you know, hungry and seeking for the change that you are pushing for as well? Well, by, by the way, this information in the public domain is, in my view, the leak of a document. It is not an, a, a, a summary of what is going on or who is actually involved in the group. Mm -hmm. There are many younger people who are involved in the process. I just talked about a group uh, actually operating from outside of the country that is involved in electoral reform. Uh, one of the leaders, and they were in the country to hold a huge uh, event at the Nikon Hilt in uh, a few months ago. Another one was to have taken place in Lagos on May uh, 30th, but for the um, uh, um, COVID-19 pandemic crisis. These are young people in their late 20s and early 30s, and they live around the world. They are, in fact, right now having presentations uh, from um, Oracle 
on an electronic voting system that can reduce or take away election violence literally in our country. I will be listening to one of those presentations on Zoom on Monday. So these are 20-something, 30-something-year-old Nigerians and they're scattered around the world and they are more passionate about these changes and they're part of this general movement. So I think that when the document was leaked, uh, the tendency is to just pick up on the names of the most recognizable people in the group. Mm -hmm. But it's a very, very broad movement in which a significant proportion are much, much younger Nigerians. Right. Uh, convener, Center for Value Leadership, Professor Pat Utomi, thank you so very much for your contributions on News on the Hour. And keep safe out there, sir. Thank you so much. Pleasure.